and welcome to season 3 of my podcast today my guest is dean the science and technical specialist for the good food institute asia pacific prior to working with the good food institute he worked as an investigation officer for the police hi dean welcome to my show hi vidan Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. I'm looking forward to our chat. No, I'm also really excited. In my previous episodes, I have interviewed lawyers and a judge. I am excited to talk with someone who worked with the police. Ah, no, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad I can add to the mix of the legal people you've talked to. So, Dean, I'm curious to know what did you do as an investigation officer? It's really great that you've talked to a, a judge and a lawyer because we work within that same system that they do, and so my particular role is that I had to help police officers solve crimes, and how I did that was by providing them with information and leads on where to look for evidence. So really, the way I looked at it, it's like I was trying to solve a big puzzle. So when you start the puzzle, we only had a few pieces at the start, and it was pretty hard to fit them together. But then, as we used those, we would search for more pieces and more pieces. And as we got them, it would help us fit the puzzle together. And then, once we got to that point, I would give what I found to police officers, and then they would use that evidence to go and either find more evidence, or then eventually arrest the criminals, so that then we could hand over the evidence and the criminal to the lawyers and judges, like the people you talk to, so that then they could go through the criminal system using the evidence we found. to maybe put them in prison or give them fines depending on what crimes they did. That's really interesting and on TV I've seen this in crime investigation series and all of that looks and sounds really interesting. Yeah, I was going to ask if you'd watch those because there's one thing in a lot of criminal TV shows where they show a wall and they have a big wall with pictures of different people and they draw lines between them to try and solve the puzzle have you seen that before yeah i have yeah so we would do that kind of thing i would do that on my computer at work so that's exactly the kind of stuff i did and that must be really fun drawing lines yeah yeah it was very fun can you tell me about any interesting case that you investigated so unfortunately because it's um dealing with criminals and investigations i can't really talk about any specific case because that gets into legal issues but i guess in general i can talk a bit about so i worked for the federal police so a lot of the work we did was trying to help find and stop people bringing drugs and other illegal things into australia and uh, these people can be very tricky so there's very different sneaky ways of getting the drugs in because they know people like us to trying to stop them So it's very much as I said it's like a puzzle but the other person is making the puzzle harder and harder the more you try and find them but then once we get to the point of having enough evidence so the really exciting bit is when we'll give the evidence to the police officers they would have to go and arrest the suspects and so when they did that we would sit in a big office and we would have lots of screens and we could see the police officers going to arrest people and we could hear them on the radios and often they would when they were going to arrest people they would find things and they would call back to us and say oh we need to know what this is can you tell us about that and so we would have to work very quickly to try and help them because they're out at a criminal's property and they're finding things that they need to either take or leave so it was very exciting and we would be sitting there and we could see it all on cameras so it was like watching a tv show like you were talking about except it was for real and we were part of it so i found that really exciting I would have liked to maybe go out there in person sometimes but that's only for the police officers. But I'm sorry I can't tell you any more specifics but yeah, I think I wouldn't be allowed to unfortunately. Yeah, uh, that's fine. And if something's lost in your house, do you investigate? <laughs> I do actually and and I get hired by my wife Kate. as the investigator in the house so i'm very good at finding lost things for her especially i'm a good investigator when it comes to finding her hairbrush especially that's my speciality <laughs> that's very funny i mean finding hairbrushes working with the police and working with gfi is so different 
How did you end up at GFI? Yeah, it is very different. And I guess this goes back to when I was at school and at university. So originally, when I was studying, I, I really liked animals. And so I did animal science and I did animal science research. But when I was doing that research, I learned a lot more about how the animals were farmed and raised. And I really didn't like the things I was learning and the fact that the science I was doing was trying to support those animal industries. So at that point, I decided to change my focus and go do other work where I felt that I would be doing more helpful things. And so I went to work for the Australian government and I did a few different jobs there. And from that, I went to work for the police because I thought that's a good, that's a good thing to do. You're helping to stop criminals, stopping crime and, and helping people. And I really liked that. But actually, it was your dad that then helped me get my job at GFI because he shared the ad with my wife, Kate, who he works with. And because of that, I saw that the skills that I learned while I was doing science to support animal industries, I found that I could then use the same information that I'd learned to help find alternatives to those animal industries instead. And I thought that was a really exciting thing to do and also really great because I really like animals and I'd, I'd like to help them as well as help people live uh, better lives alongside animals rather than exploiting them. I've also interviewed someone from GFI. Oh, yeah, I work with Ruben. He's very impressive. Yeah. Can you tell me more about your role at GFI? Sure. So I guess you've already talked to Varun in general, what we talk about, but I guess just really quickly, I can say that again, in case it's been a while since you talked to him. As an organization, we're focused on helping to build a food system that's better for the planet, as well as humans and animals. And so I think you might remember that farming on animals on a large scale has some very bad effects on the planet. And I'm sure you hear about this a lot. Yeah, um, I do. Like, yeah, climate change and disease. And it's about 70 billion animals per year. That's a lot of animals. And the way things are going, we might need to grow another 35 billion in the coming 20 years. So that's just, it's a crazy amount of animals and the world can't support that. So we're trying to find an alternative. And so the way we're doing that is trying to make meat, eggs and dairy in a different form without using these animals. And so then we look at me specifically Based on my scientific background, as you said, I'm the science and technical specialist for Asia Pacific. And so my job is to help scientists and companies to do more research and work to create meat, eggs and dairy without animals that's cheaper, tastier and better for the planet today. And so it's also my job to help more young people like yourself have options if you want to work in this type of space in the future. So that as you get older, if you this area and you want to help, then we'll make sure that you can get the skills you want to either do research or start a company or work in this space to help make better food for the planet. And in my interview with Varun, I also, he also explained about clean meat, but isn't all that also meat from animals? Yeah, so that's an exciting one. So back when I was doing my research as a student, I actually was doing work similar to clean meat. So we would take very small amount of cells. And I think what, do you know what cells are, Badan? Yeah, I know what cells are, like the body cells that you start off with, then you grow. Ah, uh, great. Yeah. So I used to work with the cells in our muscles and you might know that muscles are what make up the majority of meat. And so I would grow these little muscle cells in a lab. So you would look at them under a microscope. They're very tiny. And in the lab, we used to grow them and they would um, multiply. And then eventually they would join together and form the little uh, muscle fibers, which makes up the meat that we eat. And so I was looking at to see how they grow. But now people are using that same technique. Um, to actually grow enough cells that we can eat them as meat. And because you take a tiny amount from the animal, you can use an anesthetic and the animal doesn't even know that its cells are gone. So essentially you can create meat that's real meat, but it doesn't even hurt a single animal. So I'm really excited about that because I think that's really cool. Yeah, that also sounds really interesting. Yeah, and, I, and you actually live in the only country in the world where you can buy that at the moment. So I'm very jealous that you're living there. But it's very rare and expensive here. Yeah, that's true. And that's why uh, we think it's really important that the work we do is to try and help make it a lot cheaper and a lot more widespread so that anyone can try it anywhere in the world eventually. That's, 
That's nice. <laughs> do you miss working with the police? I do miss the work because I like puzzles and it was like I used to get to go to work and solve puzzles. I mean, that was really fun. I don't know if you like to do puzzles at all, but I sorry. I do Oh, yeah. So I miss that. But overall, I think I'm much happier now because I, I really think that the work I'm doing now is for a better cause. And so that's really the most important thing for me. And I can still do puzzles in my spare time if I want to stay happy. What did you want to be as a child? So this is related. Have you heard of being marine biologist before? Have you heard of that job? Yeah, I have. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to be when I was young. I used to really like drawing fish and whales and dolphins. And I liked science back then. So I wanted to do science where I could go look at animals and learn about dolphins and fish and study them. So I didn't quite get to do that. But yeah, back then, that's what used to excite me. And I used to love drawing. So I would just draw whales and fish all the time and hope that one day I could see them for real. Yeah. When I went to the US, I went whale watching and we saw, we saw these amazing groups of humpback whales. Wow. I'm jealous. That's exciting. Did you get yeah. very close? We did get quite close. But it was on a ship, so we didn't get to go inside the water and pat them. That's probably good because they're very big. They might yeah. accidentally roll over. What are your hobbies? Well, I guess I talked about them a bit. So similar to how I used to like, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Now I actually live right next to the ocean. So I go swimming lots and do snorkeling so that I can go look at all the fish and uh, we actually see some turtles and I saw some dolphins the other day. So I find that really exciting. And I love just going and watching the fish swim around and live their lives. So that's my main hobby at the moment. And similar to what I was saying about my previous job with the police, I really like to do puzzles and board games. So I, I like doing that as well. And I also heard you like to read Harry Potter a lot. Even I do. Ah, wow. Yeah. I think I've read Harry Potter three or four times over the years. I love it that much. I'm, I'm right now on the fifth book. Oh, wow. That's exciting. And which house are you in? Oh, I remember Kate looked that up for me. I, I can't remember. I think maybe I was in Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw. Of course, I wanted to be in Gryffindor, but I didn't get that. How about you? What house are you in? I'm in Ravenclaw. Oh, do you like that? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, Ravenclaw is pretty cool. But in my school, I'm yellow, which is Hufflepuff. Ah, okay. That's cool. I used to be in yellow in uh, high school as well. So I guess maybe I was a Hufflepuff. Mm hmm <laughs> That's fun. Oh, I'm jealous that you get to read Harry Potter for the first time still. It's been so long since I got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on my show. Oh, no worries, Vedant. It was really great to talk to you. Um, and you do a really good job here. So I look forward to watching more episodes in the future. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Dear listeners, Follow my Facebook page, Curious Vedan, to get updates on my upcoming episodes, to listen at leisure on your phone, and get notified about future episodes. Subscribe by searching for Curious Vedan wherever you get your podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also listen to my show on CuriousVedant.com. Thank you for listening to Curious Vedant. And don't forget to rate and leave comments. <laughs>